So this is going to be a video on, on the trouble with Games Workshop Paint and the fix that I've come up with, uh, that many people have come up with, to remedy the problem. So the problem with the, the, the paint is the pot that it's in. So the problem with the Games Workshop Paint is this actual pot here. Um, the problem is the design of this pot leaves a lot to waste. So the reason I say that is because these colors tend to separate, so especially the metallic. So here is a Balthazar Gold, and as you can see, it's separated out. This is a Stormhost Silver that is definitely separated out. You see the you see the clear layer and then the silver layer on the bottom. So these paints are going to have to be shaken up before we use them. That's not out in the ordinary. That makes perfect sense. So this is one I've just shaken up. And I'll shake it up again just to show you. So the problem with the shaking up is that as soon as I've shaken it and then I open it, I've shaken paint onto the back end of this spoon. So it just makes sense. The spoon dips into the paint as you shake it. Something's going to fly out here. Then what happens is you've got to clean it off against the rim because if not, when you put the paint cover back in, that paint on the back lands on the back cover. Then when you close it, squirts out the back here, gets all over your hands. So you can see this one's done the same thing here and a mess on this side here. And these are sort of the problems with that. Each one of those splats uh, wastes a little bit of paint. So on top of that, you can see inside in that ring there, there's a lot of wasted paint as well. So these tend to be a little bit wasteful um, and a little bit messy and they tend to get on your hands. So the solution many people have come up with is to re-bottle them into uh, 15 millimeter bottles and then all you do is open your cover and put a little drop of the paint you want down and mix it with whatever medium you like or consistency you like. That's it. No waste, no mess, no nothing. Um, so I've been slowly as using colors have been converting them from these pots to these containers and there's a bead inside here to help you stir up the paint better. Uh, so I'm going to show you how we've moved paint from this bottle to these droppers uh, in a very easy and, and slick little way. Um, so we're going to do that now and hopefully this helps you out as much as it's helped me out. So these plastic bottles come in three parts. It comes with the nozzle, it comes with the bottle itself, that just fits right inside there. And then it comes with the cover that screws on the top. Pretty straightforward design. So all we have to do is figure out how to get the paint out of this bottle into that bottle without losing too much of it. As far as cost goes, I bought an entire bag of these plastic bo bottles for about 20 bucks Canadian off of Amazon, I believe. Um, and it came with all the parts and that stuff to put that together. I then bought a hundred nail polish balls, which are just stainless steel little bearings, of which I drop one in each bottle as I transfer the paint over. And that's just to help mixing the paint as it's sitting in the container if it tends to uh, spread apart. Uh, and it's a little easier to mix than in these original bottles. The only other thing we're going to need to do this is going to be a little bit of flow aid. Uh, and that's just to help us get the dregs of the paint out of the bottles. Um, as well, it adds a little bit more runniness to some of the paints that are really, really dry in the, in the bottles over time. So the first thing we're going to do, and this, this process tends to differ depending on which type of paint we have, be it metallic or be it... A layer paint or a base paint. Some are thicker than others, so some are a little harder to do. With the metallics, they're runny enough that I can almost pour a lot of them right into the bottle initially. So we're going to try to do that first.
and by getting 15 milliliter bottles you have uh, lots of room for the Games Workshop paint to fit. As you see that only fills half the bottle. So now what I'll generally do is I'll take one of my older paint brushes and I'll start scraping some of this paint down to salvage as much as I can before I have to water it all down. Now for metallics, the bottom of this paint bottle is more of the silver stuff that didn't mix. So it's a bit more of a slurry, but I can pull most of that out because there isn't very much of it there. If this was a base paint, there'd be a lot more of this because it's a thicker, thicker paint. And because this is also the pigment in the base of your colors, you definitely want to keep as much of this as you can. When you look inside, we've got almost all of it already. That's pretty good there. Put that aside for a moment. What we're going to do is take the flow aid and we're going to take about five or six drops right into the well. We're going to close the cap again and then we're going to shake it up to try to dissolve some of that extra paint and get it lifted into the fluid that we can then pour it into our new bottle. So now that we're finished mixing it, you'll see that we've got some up on the spoon again. And some on the back wall again. And the rest of it is inside. And there's a little tiny bit more paint collected in the bottom now that wasn't there before. So we're just going to scrape as much of it down to the bottom as we can. And try to salvage as much of this paint as we can. Now you can run another set of drops. I tend not to want to dilute my paints too much, including the metallics. If this was a base paint or a dry paint, um, I would run a couple more drop sets of drops through because usually they're thicker and uh, I'm going to water them down when used anyway. So we are losing some of the paint on our paintbrush, unfortunately, but we can use that right now, which is why I change them as I use them, because I can use that in my current project that I'm doing now. Let me just wipe that onto our wet palette, and we're relatively good to go here. So now as far as the rest of the bottle goes, we're just going to take the top and put it on top, like so. We're going to dry around the edge with some paper towel. like so. Close that bottle for good. And then I'm going to peel the label off, which suspiciously peels very, very easily. Now some people use a bit of glue to hold it on. I find it, it sticks quite well as stands, especially if it loops in on itself and it can hold itself in. And now we have our Rune Fang Steel. ready to be used, easily shaken up. Uh, so if you found this video helpful, please feel free to leave a like or a comment or uh, subscribe to the channel, that's always a help. And uh, we'll see you on the next time we do one of these painting videos. 
Um, as an aside, these here are also the same size as the um, essential oils bottles. So if you get a box that holds essential oils or a nail polish uh, holder, you can then stack these up as a display and instantly grab the color you want. So hopefully that helps. And if you did find that helpful, like I said, subscribe to the channel, leave a like or a comment, and we'll see you the next time we do a painting video.